it took was one phone call in the middle of the night. And life was changed forever. My dad went in for surgery on a Monday, and by Thursday he was fighting for his life. Everything was going fine the day after his surgery. I went to visit him. He was up talking. Everything seemed fine. Rick had such a positive attitude that I had no clue that anything was going to go wrong. And then all of a sudden that night, he went out of it and never woke up again. That Thursday night, we got a phone call saying we needed to get there as soon as possible. My dad was extremely ill and might not make it through the night. The love of my life, the man that I thought I would grow old with, turned out to be a six-week experiment. There's nothing that could have prepared me for what I saw. My dad was attached to a number of machines. He had a breathing tube breathing for him. He was attached to a number of IVs. He, his entire body had to have been two to three times its normal size full of fluid. His eyes were swollen shut. His lips were so puffy that his whole face was just bruised. I had just been talking to him two days ago, and now they said he might not make it through the night. I just couldn't understand what had happened. It was like someone took my stomach and just twisted and turned and just felt so empty. At that point, we were told that my dad had sepsis, which is a toxic response to infection that causes systemic inflammation. The cause of the sepsis was due to MRSA entering the bloodstream through the contaminated central line on his foot. Hospital acquired infections are a major problem. We have probably a, close to 100,000 people dying each year of hospital acquired infections. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimate between, that between 5 to 10 percent of people who receive health care will get a nosocomial infection. 5 to 10 percent. Hospital acquired infections kill more people each year than AIDS, car accidents, and breast cancer combined. Even the CDC recognizes healthcare associated infections are increasingly unacceptable due to the knowledge we've attained about them. With what I've seen over the past number of years with family members has been sickening. In the summer of 2006, my uncle Bob died as a result of medical error. Because of what happened to my uncle, we did a lot of research before my dad's surgery. And in all the research we did, nothing ever came up about the seriousness of hospital acquired infections. For me personally to sit there and just say, this can't happen again. There's no way the medical industry could make a mistake twice. And then to watch my brother-in-law go through what he did for six weeks and to watch my sister and my niece suffer was unacceptable. The winter after my dad died, a family friend put me in contact with Pat Masters. Pat is a former news anchor in southern New England and now is involved in the fight against hospital-acquired infections. What's really interesting is I've been a news and medical reporter for my entire career, and the medical reporting was later on, uh, and actually, uh, soon after I left that profession, my father went in the hospital. I spent the better part of six months at my dad's bedside. He went in initially for um, surgery on his neck after he fell down the stairs. And as I learned later on, um, the antibiotic they gave him to bring down a slight fever before they could do the surgery set up sort of a perfect storm for a C. diff infection to take hold. And what happens there is we give patients powerful antibiotics. It wipes out the normal germs in their intestine. And a germ which may live in only small numbers or one that they acquire in the hospital grows up to larger numbers, produces a poison or toxin which inflames the colon and uh, produces a serious and sometimes even lethal infection. The next day we got a call that in the middle of the night they found him barely breathing and we should come right away and uh, so we did. They did emergency surgery to open him up and see what they could see and they said we don't know why but he didn't make it and uh, so we had, well, we had the machine withdrawn and I was just bewildered, you know, once you deal with what you have to deal with in real time, I couldn't understand why he had died from something like that. I just started doing research. I started talking to everybody. I found out infections in the hospital are the fourth leading cause of death in the country. It happens, you know, in little corners. It, one, one death happens in Wisconsin, one in Massachusetts, one in California. So we don't talk to each other. We don't know that these things are preventable.
Like Pat's father, my dad also caught C. diff. Because of this new infection, my dad went into septic shock again. I've never even heard of sepsis before I was septic. Doreen Betancourt is a sepsis survivor. It, it was just supposed to be go in, have a cyst taken off my ovary, and go home the following day. And uh, it didn't pan out like that. Being operated on that night, I, I was having a lot of pain. It was found two days later that I had a bowel perforation. And they called my mother and uh, told her that they were going to have to take me to the operating room again. They said, we really need to perform this surgery. And if we don't operate on her, she is going to die. They left me open to heal from the inside out because I was so infected. It's a place that, as I revisit it, I, I don't know if it'll ever get any easier for me. Um, you know, it almost cost me my life. And that's that place that you want to put in the back of your head and not revisit. For a month straight, they couldn't tell if I was going to live or die. After this all happened, I went to school to become a nurse and find out a little bit more about the medical field and like basically what happened to me. Many possible acquired infections are resistant to the common antibiotics we use, and they're easily acquired from person to person by touching, which is why hand washing is so important. Now, I should mention that C. diff isn't killed by normal Purell. You have to wash your hands, and some people say you don't even really kill it then, but at least you can rinse it off. We know that physicians don't wash their hands. In baseline studies um, where they measured nursing, nurses washing their hands and physicians washing their hands. The baseline rate for nurses, I think, was about 72 percent for physicians. It was about 19 percent. Simply washing their hands between patients. People have to be trained in the terms of the seriousness of an infection control. And the simple things we do, such as hand washing between all patients, so hand hygiene, uh, the proper use of antibiotics, proper use of gowns and gloves when appropriate. Um, and, then the, and then the last thing is the early recognition of hospital acquired infections. I think we need to be trained to be more active and feel more comfortable asking questions. It, it's up to, to family members to learn, um, advocate for their family member. When you see something going wrong, usually something is. The thing that makes me crazy is that people don't know. And you can't participate in preventing something when you don't know it's a problem. The educated patient is always better than the uneducated patient because they can help control the disease. I, I feel that a lot of it, it's, it's not a nurse not being competent. It's just a lack of knowledge, like not knowing. It's important to make the distinction that, you know, healthcare workers are not bad people. You know, they go into healthcare to save people and do a good job. Now when I talk to my patients that are scared and afraid, I can actually hold their hand and say, I understand. And I'm not saying that because, you know, I'm earning so much money a, a, an hour. I'm leaning on the side of their bed holding their hand because I really know. The night my dad died when we got there, he was full of fluid again. Um, and he had blood pouring out of every orifice. Once my uncle got there, he just stood next to my dad for a couple hours, just dabbing all the blood so that it wouldn't pull in his face. It, it, was, it was awful. I always remember the nurse saying, uh, well, I'm going to shut off the uh, medication now. And that was it. That was the end. Ultimately, it's your life. It's the life of somebody you love. And to me, there's no amount of vigilance that is too much to ensure that they come home safely to you. The most important thing that I want people to take from this is that you need to educate yourself and you need to not be afraid to speak up for yourself or your loved ones while you're getting medical treatment. If you do have someone that's going to go into the hospital, you make sure the area is clean, that the patient care is one-on-one -on -one whenever possible, insist on answers, and just don't take no for an answer because you can't go back. You can't go back. Mm -hmm.